that action in the podcast. Joan Jones. Does anybody ever call you JJ? Yes. They do? Yes. You look like you don't like it. I like it. You do? Yes, as long as you, you should notify remi- your face because it didn't say that to me. <laughs> don't talk about my face like that. <laughs> well, you're, you're, you gave the face of, nah, I don't like the JJ. I just thing. had to make, give you the face to make sure you stay as Craig and not Love Master or oh, something else. That's always creeped you out. Always. It's hilarious. <laughs> All these years later, you don't get that it's just a character. That, it's still creepy. And you just saw me recently. I know. You said you love the show. You I did. Just, that's the part you just don't no, like. No, I like it. I love it. No, you do not just, love it. I, I saw do. the face. It just creeps me out. <laughs> oh, so it's kind of like a horror film. Like you go to a horror film, you go, "This is creeping me out," but it's not. But I'm still like really like my face is bothered by this. I, yeah, I, you know, I have that face. I get in trouble for my face. My whole life, I've gotten in trouble for my face and my expressions for real well, or you, lack thereof. Your your expressions do you do not hold back. We know how you feel. With your expressions, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Exactly, it's probably got you in trouble a lot, especially Catholic school. Exactly, yeah. You grew up in Catholic school. Some of it, nuns. I could only stay in for a couple of years, and then I had to get out. They're called nuns, and then they're lay teachers. Is that what they're called? They're called something like that. They never got laid, but they're lay yeah. teachers. <laughs> so, or am, am I right? Am yeah, I right? they're called lay teachers. Yeah. Did they beat you with a stick? I no, I no. didn't have that problem, but my brothers. <laughs> had problems like that so you got away with it apparently they, they you did the face when they weren't looking i did the face i got in trouble a lot for um you know maybe i didn't show the the same amount of enthusiasm that i was supposed to be showing for something and i i thought a lot of things that they did were stupid so oh you think yeah so i'd be like <laughs> we're not doing Yes. Most education is that way, but I think Catholic school takes it up another level of what in the world is this? And you wonder who creates it and how they create it. I mean, how do they sit around and go, here's a good idea? Yeah, well, curriculum in general, right? Exactly. It could be public. It could be. I was thinking yeah. about that the other day is, is, is when people are educated, like quote unquote educated. Mm-hmm. What's well, educated in what someone else finds you should be educated in. And that makes you an intellectual because you regurgitate, you memorize something. Here's what you should memorize and then you'll be smart. But it doesn't make you smart, does it? Not necessarily. And don't they quell your creativity in schools like that? You know what I mean? Like, you're a very creative person. Did you have to tamp it down? Um, no, I actually just had to survive in school. I really enjoyed school. You did? I did. I loved school. A except creative for, person like you? I, I did. I find it hard to believe. I loved it. because They're so regimented. That's so not you. It's so not an Well, artist. Catholic school was like that. Yeah, that's what I but mean. But I went to public school first, kindergarten through sixth, and then I You're went so to- so bad that they sent you and to And then Catholic. I went to Catholic school for seventh, eighth, and ninth, and I just couldn't handle it. Of course you couldn't. But, that's not um, you. Yeah, there was no art. Did and... they do it to tame you? No, I have, uh, I'm from a large family, so my older siblings had, there were issues and stuff, so they didn't send me to the public school in our neighborhood. So. Because of the older siblings? Yeah, so then I went to- You got to... punished for them? I did. <laughs> There's also a price thing that uh, private school, if you're going to go private, is very expensive. And I remember my ex-wife, she said, well, uh, she said, I found a Christian school. I said, uh, well, wait a minute. I don't know about that. She goes, well, it's half the price. I said, Jesus saves. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, no, apparently worth. But Catholic school, I know, is much less. Yeah. You sort of get the same sort of you know reg- regimented outline as you would at a private school, but it's uh, but a little more. Did they have religious classes too? You had yeah, to go to... they didn't make any sense. Yeah. So you're sitting there, this artist that just wants to burst out and bring your art, and they're telling you the exact opposite. Isn't that how most schools are? I mean, they just want to make you into, form you into something that you're not. Yeah, but I, I think, don't you think it's good to also like be exposed to, I mean... I, I also was exposed to so many different kinds of people that were not like me that that was interesting to me and that was fascinating you, to me. The people that do get in line. Yeah. They're you know, different. Sure. They're different. They're in a system. And they know how to play that system and I found yeah. that fascinating. Really? Yeah. Did you ever kind of copy them and, try, and go with I the system? I did. To I did. Assimilate? I tried to assimilate. It was dangerous assimilation, it, for it, sure. It sure is. And you, you know deep down, though, that you're not this way. <laughs> I was There's something else that's just driving you inside, right? Yeah. yeah. I tried to assimilate. I tried to keep my uniform straight. And it just and didn't make any sense. 
It didn't. Isn't that a thing when you're a kid that these things that just don't make sense and you're not allowed to question either? I question all the time. Inside. You better not say it on the outside or they're going to get you. I did. My face said it. (laughs) (laughs) I got in trouble. (laughs) But the nuns never beat you? It's because you're female? I mean, the the boys I know, they got whooped. Boys did. Yeah. No, girls just- Rulers. Girls are just like a whole other nasty, you know, subversive thing. Right. You know. Do you still but, hang out with anyone from back then? Yeah. I'm yeah, I mean I I'm born and raised in Hollywood, so Oh. I so still have still, a lot of my peeps around. They're around. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Anyone yeah. else uh, become famous? You mm. went to Hollywood High? I did. A I lot got, of famous people came out of that. I got out of Immaculate Heart, which wasn't that Meghan Markle and a few others. Wow. Immaculate Heart. Oh, that's the Catholic that's school. The then Catholic you go to Hollywood School. High. Then I went to Hollywood High. Were you the sheiks? I, we were the sheiks, and I was the sheik. I was oh, so excited no. to be the of sheik. All of, of all of your accolades. <laughs> you know, that, that one you held back on me. Dude, that was the best. Everyone was like, you were going to be the school mascot? You want to be that? And I go, I would love to be that. That's so <laughs> crazy. I have a friend. Of, well, I haven't seen her a long time. And the reason I know about the sheik is... They had a party, a surprise party for her, and I dressed as the sheik because she went to Hollywood High, and that's why I remember because she was the sheik. Do you Who? know any past sheiks? Is, is I, it something they pass uh, on? Or? No, I might know the name. Shana Landsberg. You know Shana? Shana. Yeah, she became a big casting director, and she came from the Landsberg, you know, the producers yeah. and all that kind of stuff, but... Yeah. Hollywood High, a lot of people went to Hollywood. I guess your era, they must have missed the famous people except for you. <laughs> so, I don't know. <laughs> did, you, did you form bands back in school where, you know, they always had the school bands. I was envious of these guys. Not that they were getting laid. It was sixth grade. But, but still, <laughs> they, were, they were getting the attention was the equivalent of getting laid. You know, as, as a rock, they were the first rock stars were the kids in our school. Did you do that? I mean, did I you did. form a band? Um, no, I didn't form it, but I was always, you know, I would show up to sing. I'd be one of the girl singers in the neighborhood. So I would do that as much as I could. And everybody I went to school with was so, I mean, they were top notch, amazing musicians. A lot of them went on to Berkeley School of Music and, um, just a and lot of Would I know any schools. of them? They um, ended up in any bands that I might know or? No, a lot of classical musicians like yeah. you know, L.A. Philharmonic, like Bert Hara and the L.A. Philharmonic. Does, and... does that does that kind of music um, resonate with you? Yeah, I love all kinds of music because yeah. it's just it's vital, it's important, mm-hmm. and you never know how you're going to listen. Yeah, and how it's going to hit you. Right. You know. But yeah, so that hits you in a different kind of part of your body and part of your spirit. Yeah. As opposed to something else, it could be grunge or it could be. Whatever it is, it just hits you in different parts of your body. Yeah, your I mean, spirit. I, you know, the whole band thing was so exciting. Like for our noon concerts at Hollywood High, like we had Circle Jerks and like Dead Kennedys and like whoa, whoa, Fear. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's start with Circle Jerks. We that had a, all the that punk. That's a whole other meaning for me. <laughs> yep. We that had was all a the... band called the Circle yeah, Jerks. Yeah, we had all the punk bands um, at our lunchtime on campus, like in our quad. So be eating a sandwich listening to these bands and. I just thought that was so amazing, you know. And then at night we'd sneak out and like, I'd go see X and um, the Plim Souls and I don't know, uh, so many at local places where yeah. you're sneaking in. Yes, because the girls always got in because you could pass the bouncer. They don't care what your age is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much. We get we get booted. Yeah, that's and, the way the bouncers work, and then they're working the women. So you would go to these places underage, and some of these people are still your friends that you went to school with. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And do, do the, do, none of them ended up in music, though? No, they all went on to other, I don't know, other adventures. And they're the people that come to see you when you perform. <laughs> they do. Isn't it great? The old friends, they, come, they show up. There's a little gang of them. Hey, I went to Hollywood High with Joan Jones. <laughs> Something I'm going to veer off just for a moment. We'll come back to the art and the craft of music, mm-hmm. art. Yeah, I mean, I just think it's the most wonderful thing in the world. And I love singing and music and just the, the whole connection. It's You're connected with, like, the highest source when you're really in your music. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. What do you call your higher source? Do you call it God, Jesus, Christ, breath, uh, higher? What do you call it? The higher power? What Do you, do you have something? You, what, I, they say the, the creator is creativity. You're tapped into this creator. You're 
a certain space and then it flows out of you easier than it does when you're not in that space. Yeah. What do you call it? Do you call it something or identify it? I identify it definitely as a higher power. Um, I would say God. I'm not afraid of that word. No. Yeah. So it's all inclusive for me. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's all encaps encapsulating. So yeah. You tap into that big G and it's <laughs> amazing what comes out. I'm, I noticed you hit notes the other day and I think you were afraid of the notes going in. <laughs> Not, no, I mean you were saying Aren't I haven't done that song in a long time. Like that? that's like, that's I hit a one the other day. I heard. Uh, Les Mis. I couldn't. Believe <laughs> I heard because my mom was there. I hit that whatever that note was, and I could have backed off. It was like the it was from Jean Valjean. Mm -hmm. uh, bring him home, and he literally it's upper upper, like even falsetto, and I just I'm going for it. And I went for it, but you did on my favorite song, of all, one of my favorite songs of all time. This is a song Landslide, but not the Landslide. Why did you choose the name of that song to be the same song as the hit that Fleetwood Mac had? You know, I wasn't really aware of it. That song wrote itself. Mm. Um, it just sort of fell out of us, um, you know, just lyrically, um, melodically. Mm. So I didn't really, I didn't give it too much thought. And then... Again, like all the girls at the all girls school, <laughs> we're all singing "Landslide" by, you know, Stevie Nicks, um, Fleetwood Mac, and I was just like, "Oh, so maybe in my subconscious, it was mm -hmm. again kind of one of those words that just it had a lot of depth and a lot of meaning, and um, I don't know, it fell out of my psyche." <laughs> it sure did. It fell out and it spilled out, and it's just these it's beautiful lyrics and and. And you really are tapped into God when you get to those some of those notes. And I watched you the other day, consternation at first, hesitance. I haven't done this in a long time. And there I was, like one of the hosts of the party, going, you got to do this for me. <laughs> and you see that face you just gave? That's the face that I got. The eye roll. I'm very familiar with <laughs> My, my kids, their phone, I call it an eye roll. Uh, right. <laughs> They're on the eye roll all the time. Yeah. I get them from you as well when I do the Love Master and when I request <laughs> Landslide, which you hadn't done in a long time. But did you tap into that flow, tap into God and just allow it to? Because you know you hit the notes the other day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just, I think the, the more mature I get, the older I get, um, I want to celebrate and... Um, be mindful of what I can do, and if I can do it, then I have to have faith that I'll do it. Yeah. So that's my headspace. Yeah. So I have to just sort of sit back, and here we go. Mm. <laughs> See what happens. Yeah. Well, music is breath, and the breath is the Christ breath, and you know you're the flute that the Christ breath lives through. I mean, it's with all you're the whole and the flute. And that's what happens with musicians, great musicians, is open up and let the breath, literally the breath f flow. I was teaching my daughter some breath work. I said, the vibrato, you know, the vibration is you're vibrating your vocal cords. So it has to have good breath. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand. And the, and the greatest breath comes from, it comes from, oh, you know what they want me to do in the, back, in the background here? They're telling me chuckle chatter. Do you know what chuckle chatter is? Mm -hmm. No. This really, like, ha, ha, ha. yeah, exactly. This really, <laughs> this really does. It opens you up the space and the chakras and whatever that's called, whatever people deem it to be. It really does open up that pathway to the Creator, to God, and it just allows for the flow. So here's how it works: you laugh for no reason. First, you let out a. Do it with me. A cleansing ha through your nose and let out a ha. Ready? Okay. Ha. ha! Good. Oh, she has no problem <laughs> opening her mouth. <laughs> hey. No, no, that's. Don't go dirty. That I wasn't did the love it. mess. That you was went Fred. dirty. That I was not dirty. I'm I was not dirty. Just, I just had a client this morning. They, they went ha with her mouth kind of shut, and I, so it's sort of response to that. I was saying now that she's got Jones ha. Now you giggle at the end, okay? You let a ha and then giggle at the end and just let it let it go. Ready? Okay. Ah. <laughs> Don't shake your head at me. She has the eye roll and the head shake. I don't, that shame head shake. You know what else Catholic school did to what my laugh, though? Do? To my chuckle? Oh, no. They took the sound away from it. 
Stop it. Let me see the Catholic school laugh. That's it. You put your hand in front of your mouth. It's, it's, it's a shame thing. People are ashamed take of the like, book. The book. <laughs> Seriously. Took my laugh away. That's amazing. <laughs> Society does it too. What are you laughing at? Wipe the smile off your face. What a fool. I feel like a fool laughing. And people do this all the time. I see them, even when I do these uh, chuckle chatters, guided laughitation. I call it laughitation as well. Because if you're meditating... You know, you're breathing. You're allowing for the breath of God, you're the spirit, the, the light to shine. But And we dim our lights all the time because of this shame that we're in that they put into us. All right, we're going to do it again. You know shame. There you go. We There's gotta, no shame. Because no. <laughs> I have to laugh. <laughs> we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do a hot and laugh at the And then we're going to add one more thing. And we're, let's do one more exercise. Here we go. And we're getting our breath going. You have your, your circulatory system, your heart is Pumping your skin, everything lightens up when you laugh. It's a wonderful thing to laugh. It's very underappreciated. When you say, "We're told since we're kids, stop it." You had to go silent. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. In through your nose. <sighs> <laughs> She's shaking her head. Look, <laughs> that's who you're taught. I'm shaking my head. <laughs> Uh, no, not shaking her head. Yes, she's shaking her head. No, that's where society, what oh. they do to us. This time you're going to say out loud something that bothers you. Besides me, don't. they can't be me. Something that's bothering you in life, something like a, a debt, a person, a place, a thing, You know, something that's just bothering you, politics or people, you know, whatever it is. Just say it out loud while you're laughing. Okay. All right, ready? <laughs> <laughs> say it out loud. I'm mad that my cat gets me up at three in the morning. <laughs> It's not funny. It is funny. It's not funny. It is funny. <laughs> so, how does it get you up? What does it do? It jumps on my head. <laughs> <laughs> and it paws your head. It's brutal. <laughs> and then the kitten comes laugh, in. Laugh, laugh, laugh. <laughs> the king comes. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It works. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> <You're not laughs> I'm mad. mad. I'm so mad with the cat. It lets you out. Oh, see, but you're glowing, though. You're glowing yeah. from the laughter. Now take a breath in. Ah. The cat's still there, probably up at 3 in the morning again. But it's all about perspective and perception. The perception shifts into us, into God, into power when we're laughing. You can't be even thinking angry thoughts while you're laughing. Like you tried. I'm angry right now. (laughs) You're telling your body something different. So this is the reconditioning that I teach. And... Musicians, all artists, everyone can use it because we want to shift our perspective. If we stay the other way, you're imprisoning yourself, right? Mm-hmm. The cat gets you up. Oh, my God. <laughs> Two of them. <laughs> what are you going to do about this? I don't know. I have to keep them. I do. I, I didn't say them. that was the other option. How about close them in? No, on- they they paw on the door. They're so <laughs> that loud. That wakes you up too. Oh my gosh! Yeah. They're, they're, so they're codependent. They have to have. You. Yeah, they oh. roll down the hall like a bowling ball. They're loud. Have you ever heard a Siamese cat like oh, meow? Whoa. Like that's low growl, loud, and it's like. Oh. Wow. Wow. You I decided, can't even do it. It's so you loud. You decided that's what you needed in your life. Well, no, my daughter did. Oh, your daughter. <laughs> yeah. How has your daughter changed you besides choosing a cat that ruins your life? <laughs> How does a daughter, you went a long time single. Well, not single, but yeah, well, yeah. without child. Yeah. Let's put it that way. We've known each other a long time, decades. Mm-hmm. And you were not, uh, you were pursuing your career. I guess that would be one of the reasons, right? You yeah, traveling. Children. and Traveling, yeah. Um, you know, in and out of relationships. And then I finally met the love of my life and maybe at that point I, I, we tried to have kids but it just never came together mm-hmm. and then um does he have children no so you both came in yeah and did you both as soon as you start dating and you're, you're starting to talk and you're are you both expressing this desire or are you both expressing your consternation how are you talking about something like that I think that he, well, I know for myself, like, he was the first person that I was like, I could actually have 
children with him. Wow. I never awesome. wanted to just have children and not have a family unit. And because, yeah, because you're running out of time. I'm going to do the single yeah. thing. Yeah, a lot of people so do that as well. I, I personally knew that I could not do that. Wow. I have so Good many. I have some friends that are, I mean, they are so strong and so capable and they can do that. As a single. As a single mom. Right, yeah. You know, I couldn't. I wasn't built that way. Right. Um, so I don't know. I just, it was very natural. I didn't, I just didn't think about it. And um, I didn't, I don't even think I brought it up to him either that I just. And when you did though, you were in sync. We were in sync. Yeah. Yeah. He said, and he basically probably said something, I, I, that would be cool or I'm cool if it's not. Is that where yes. he was coming from? Yeah. He's good uh -huh. with either way. Yeah. I never knew he was such a great musician, by the way. That's, I, guess, I know. He's amazing, right? I was shocked because I thought he was an executive. So I just considered him the executive that like fixes your doorbell. That's the last time I saw That's the last time I saw him. He was fixing a doorbell. It's but still not fixed. I, it is. No, stop it. That was a year ago or six yeah. months ago. It's not fixed. Oh, maybe he doesn't fix doorbells. His checkbook <laughs> fixes things. There you go. So- you're having this discussion, and, you just, and then you tried natural, and mm -hmm. it just wasn't happening. It just wasn't happening. You should have tried my laffitations. Maybe. A lot, of, a lot of pregnancies have happened from this, from them trying to be the love master, and it makes people <laughs> laugh, some that creeps them out. <laughs> but, uh, and you decided to adopt. Yes. What procedure did you use? Did you find, uh, did you go online? Did you get a lawyer? I mean, how did you go We did private this? adoption. Private, yeah. Um, again, I have a lot of people in my life that have been adopted that mm. are now, you know, adults with their own families. That was kind of like your research? You went to them and said... Uh, yeah, yeah, and then also I had friends that adopted. Yeah. Um, and so... Uh, one of my friends said, you know, I had a great experience with this private adoption um, company, for lack of a better word. I don't know. Anyway, um, they're called Adopt Help. Oh, my God. That's where I went. See? I know. I was. It's a married couple. They're former lawyers, and they handle they're... everything, soup to nuts. Yeah, and they also give back so much time to they're just, amazing. you know, yeah. people that really need I it. I can't believe that's where you well, went. Well, you were pivotal because I had. I was? <laughs> yeah, Get I had just here. found out. We had just found out. We had just been chosen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, by our daughter's birth mom to be her parents. Yeah, they choose. And I was yeah. talking to a mutual friend of ours, and yeah. you were there, and you were like, yeah, you were like, Joan, what's going on? I haven't seen you in a while. And I'm like, I know, I know. And, and then I'm like, oh, oh, this is happening to me. And, you know, and you're like, what's wrong with you? What's up? And I go, we just got chosen. Like, I literally had found out, like, within no. 24 hours that we. You know, and that I, was, I did not know this at all. This is a complete shock. And I was getting ready to, to call, the have my first conversation yeah. with the birth mom. Mm. And, um, and you had spoken to me about your experience. Because I was, like, really, like. <gasps> Like, yeah, that's a lot I mean, of anxiety. It was How a do lot. I handle this? You know, do I really want to meet her? I mean, all that kind of it's stuff. It's a lot, you know, and um, and you told me your story, and that was really, like, amazing. And oh, that's um, amazing. So it helped, and then. This is why I have this show, by the way, is to give people courage, to give people some shared wisdom, uh, that you can go down any path in life. And once you have community and have old friends and have friends, when you have that connection, it's a divine connection. Yeah. See, so I had no idea. Like, I've fixed people up with a lot of things, but I had no idea the impact of one conversation. It happened to happen. I don't even see you that often. On that day, at that moment, it happened to happen. And that's the way fate works. Yep. If you have faith. If you really get in the pocket and go, I'm open to this. That's what happens. That's what manifests. You're a beautiful girl now. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Amazing. And that's, I can't believe it. But you didn't go to this agency because of me, though. I mean, that, No, that, we just happened to be there. Happened to be the same yeah. place in the Valley. Yes. In, in Encino. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah. My, my, my son's almost 20 now. Wow. Happened a long time ago. Yeah. But uh, people, uh, adoption is, I mean, not to turn the show into an adoption show, but it really is, this, this show is about the turnaround. So you have to have these turnarounds, even that is a turnaround because yes. you have to accept I'm not going to have biological. Yes. There's that that happens. That's a loss. That's you have to grieve that. Grieve that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You have to be open enough for to bring this whole new energy in. Yes. 
And then it becomes, well, it's your child. Oh, I can't. And you yeah. and I also share that both of our adopted children look like us, which is really like there's nobody going, hey, where'd she come from? Yeah. So it was almost like that was almost fate and alignment as well, like divine alignment. Yes. I Amazing. Was, I was chosen because I'm a comedian. She wanted a sense of humor for her child. Did she hear the love master? No. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wouldn't have been my kid if she heard the love master. I'm kidding. Not, yeah, babe, I'll, take, I'll take care of the baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There goes, there goes the child's face again. Something I didn't know about you, speaking of our past, I never knew you were married in Vegas. Oh, sorry I brought it up. It's only on, it's in, if I, I. Where'd you hear that? A Google. How? (laughs) What do you mean? Isn't it scary what people can Google? But what do you mean? You were married in Vegas for like a minute, right? And then you came back and you're not married. Like when you were really young. Young, stupid. Come on, I'll I'll get all the forgiveness. Drunk. (laughs) Come on, I'll get you out of this. Catholic school. <laughs> you're, you're rebelling against Catholic school? Come on, there's a lot of excuses. Just say yes or no. Did that happen? That did not happen. Oh, all right. Google? I'm See? Gonna, I'm Don't gonna believe a, everything you Google. I'm having a word with Google <laughs> That's on this right. One. That's right. Are you, oh, my God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a hold of you after this and find out what the truth is. That, that was a fascinating thing that popped it's, out to me. It's actually a good story. Have you been to Vegas? Oh, it's a story, is it? It's a good story. Oh, let's I was it. on tour with Seal, and with I was Seal. opening for him. As Joan Jones? As or, Joan or, Jones. Or, or Sun 60? No, it's Joan Jones. And so I'm opening for him. You know, it's acoustic. He's all like, you know, everyone's showing up for disco, like great Seal shows, right? Yeah. And here I am, like, okay, I'm going to do my song that, you know, is about blah, 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 blah. And everyone would just be like, mm. Look down at the audience and be like, ooh, we're seal. Uh. <laughs> I know the And I'd be like, yeah. okay, all right. So I'd be like, yeah. oh, this next song I wrote. Um, so it was like um, my third husband that I married. Like, I would just, I just started talking like that. One time I was talking, I was in D.C. And my oldest, one of my older brothers was there with his family mm. and my nieces who were yeah. like 14 and 15 at the time. So I didn't really know them that well because yeah. big age gap. Are you making stuff. things up? I made a few things up. <laughs> <laughs> Never so, heard of this before. Because I wanted, I wanted to see if people would actually pay attention. And so, um, you know, no one really cares about the girl next door, right? Oh, yeah. So, you know, and then I go, and so here's the song, this little number. <laughs> and so then my backstage afterwards, are like, my brother's like, uh, I'm sorry I wasn't around, like, for you growing up and stuff, but <laughs> the girls are asking, like, did you really get married? Like, can you clarify? A number of times. And I was like, should I clarify? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> well, uh, I just said to them, girls, don't do that. <laughs> don't get married. No, I... um you know, it, it it was it was sort of the myth of touring. Was it an audience member or a band member? What that I that, that I you had a five minute marriage to in Vegas. Oh, I, you know, does it matter of if you're getting married to someone in Vegas? Does it matter who it is? I've it never, wasn't anyone. I've done a lot of crazy stuff. That one's that's not on my list. No, I, I bungee jumped out of a hot air balloon. I have not done the Vegas. That's stupid. The Elvis. I would never do that. <laughs> well, but getting married by Elvis, I didn't an Elvis get, impersonator. I, that's fine. For a drive-by, a drive-by. I didn't that's do fine. it though. I didn't get married in Vegas. I'm trying to tell you the truth now. You are I'm, for real. By the for way, real. I can look into your face. I can tell you if it's for real. Anyone else want to weigh in on this? I did not get married in Vegas. On Instagram Live. You want to look at her? You tell tell me the truth. Do you vote? Did she get married in Vegas or not? Why would it end up end up on Google? Because Google doesn't always tell the truth. I, I guess. How it about doesn't. like directions, like. You know, uh, how many times do you drive to the wrong place? That's true. So I go to Waze. I'm going to go to Waze and find out if you were married in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find if I I'll find the truth. Well, th- uh, we zipped by this. Um, in- I guess it's, it's not even an interview. I'm just going to call it a hang. You know, it's just a hang. We've been hanging for years, as I told. And I want to tell the audience, literally one of my favorite bands of all time. I'm, by- I'm not the only one. Billy Rebeck's another one like me. Aww. Billy, Billy, Billy Reback. You know, he's a very, very like kind of like. You probably don't notice because he's different in front of you, but he's got a lot of uh, butting head kind of vibe. Yeah, he's so funny. Yeah. he's funny. He's funny, but he also has that 
you yeah, know, like, yeah. You know, growling all the time. With you, he softens up. All I got to do is bring you up. He's the same as me. We you th- we think that you're the greatest that we've ever seen. I think Billy's the same way. I am. And it's it's pretty cool though to have people that say that. Well, I think that you're one of the funniest guys ever. Seriously. Instead of love master. <laughs> I'm gonna, I, I'm so I like tempting. the love. I'm no, so I like the love. But you, like, in a while, you face, hated it. I can't take your face. I'm going to close my eyes when you do the love. Message. It's creepy, isn't it? <laughs> well, you become him. Like, I do. I and do. I, I'm just like, close oh, your eyes. Oh. oh, yeah, baby. Six feet social distance. Stop it. Six feet. That's just the tip, baby. Stop, stop it. I... Oh, yeah. That's You see naked and afraid? I get naked. You'll be afraid, baby. Oh, yeah. So, people should see it. <laughs> it's so wrong. It's wrong. What is it? What, what what is it? It's so wrong. And I'm so not like that. That's the thing. I know. It's that's like, why I'm, it's so wrong that it's right. I'm going to admit where it comes from. Uh oh. No one knows this. Very few people know this. Okay. You, 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 know, you know, you could probably guess. I was a major geek. Like, not good with girls when I was growing up. I was five foot one, 92 pounds in high school, no pubic hair, it was awful. I hated it. <laughs> high voice, high voice on left. <laughs> I could have left out the pubic hair. Okay, thank you. Well, back then you, you wanted You said it again. You I said it. <laughs> I see, you said it again. I'm counting. There's a counter on my pubic. No. <laughs> We're counting pubes. That's no, that's, that's even worse than, because that was in my voice. That's even worse than me doing a character. So, yeah, baby. Anyway. Oh. So the girls would always talk about bad guys. You went for bad guys. You went for musicians. The worst guys ever. True. True. I'm glad for once we agree. Okay. And they got all the girls growing up. Athletes got them, but no comedians. They say they want a sense of humor. Girls are full of it. I've never met Were one. Were you funny in high school? I was a riot, but it was all making fun of myself. Oh. I would always make fun of myself. I do impressions, making fun of myself. I was doing Don Knotts back then. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I was Don Knotts. I was Barney Five. Married a little lady. That, does, that doesn't make you sick, does it, Larry? Not turning your head on that one. You love me. I but he's not this guy, though. No, you know? I don't yeah, like so, him. So, <laughs> so, oh, God. People get a zoom on your face on this. So the girls would do that with me. They would just, oh, God, you know, ha, ha, ha. You know, you're my buddy. You're my F word friend. I was always the friend. And I didn't like being the friend. I, you know, so I gave them the character that I thought they would want. A dark, Lothario pig bragger arrogant because women girls would always go for the arrogant guy and that's where he comes from okay that's right baby <laughs> oh yeah oh ladies i'll be in so long you have to take a personal day that's right baby <laughs> she's adjusting oh my gosh yeah, she, she did a little adjustment there she you were okay uh-huh. he's kind of like wearing on you i think it's when your eyes go back in your head and they you do. do that's what yeah, freaks baby, me out it's freaky baby Weird. So, Joan, yes. this, uh, I just am so gifted to have you as a friend. And Aww. I'm such a fan. Oh, my God, for years. Everybody listen to Sun 60. It still holds up. I know you probably don't do that, do it anymore. And I know it's kind of ridiculous that I asked for this request of Landslide, one of my favorite songs of all time. But I want other people to go to YouTube and check it out yourself. And I want to hear your feedback. And I've done this before, by the way. My friend is the, he was almost there the other day, and he'll come the next one. He was the American Idol music director for 16 years. Wow. And I wanted to check out with a musician, am I on to something? And me and Billy Reback, I know we're the freaky fans backstage waiting for you. <laughs> Throw us something from the stage. I mean, we were sick fans. You guys I were great. I went to so many those concerts. Were, those were fun times. Exactly. They were fun. For I mean, I went to all of your con- every concert I could go to. There I was, like a stalker. You had a restraining order for three years on me. <laughs> so I played something for Michael Orland, my very, very good friend. I started the Rose Tattoo with him. He's an amazing musician. He, and, he, and when you started singing, he goes, oh, oh, high. What's a, what's, a, what's a note that's hard to hit? High, high C. C. Yeah, so he goes, oh, high C. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I've watched him go, oh, he's like all impressed. And I went, ah, I know my music. <laughs> I'm telling you, everybody, go to YouTube, Sun 60, about five songs, Responsible. Oh, my God, amazing. It's just too much tube, too young. Oh, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. That, that was that's one of those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's unusual because the kids today wouldn't know what a tube is. <laughs> that's true. Right? Yeah. Oh, Tubi or YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. I, guess, I guess they it's would. It's still relevant. Too much, they'll think it's too much YouTube, too young. <laughs> <which> <laughs> there you be go. The case. Maybe you'll bring the song back. It's too much YouTube, too young. There's so many songs. I mean, just... Um, I was amazed by your music. Can you can you sing a little something? Oh. <laughs> There's the face again. I'll get it out of you. Oh, oh yeah, no. sing into the microphone. <laughs> That's awful. I won't make you do it. Just go YouTuber, okay? At least five songs are just from Sun Sixty. They Sun used to be 60 Far or Cry. Joan Jones, you can check Joan, out. Joan Jones has quite a few beautiful songs as well. Are you with anyone now? Are you with a record company? The whole record industry is so crazy right it's now. It's totally crazy. So, I'm independent. I get yeah. to do whatever I want, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Um, so I have a new record that's, um, I have a bunch of new content that's coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Where are you doing this music? You know, this, um, you know this studio right here. I know. I'm going to talk to Jonathan about oh doing God. some stuff. These studios are so beautiful. Yeah. I'm so honored to be here. And yeah. he's really, you met him the other day. He was doing drums on our little, we had a jam. Super cool on the jam. He just like fit right in. Great How much group. fun was that jam? And I want you to, one more question. This is personal, so you guys can go away. <laughs> okay. You look at me in the eye, you tell me the truth. Dead truth. Can I sing? Yes. Look at you her face. Look have. at her face. Look at her face. Look at her face. Yes. No, yes. No, no, no. Can I sing? Like, are you embarrassed when I'm up there singing and jamming with you when I'm singing along and just no. hitting all sorts of crazy ass no. notes? What are you thinking? This is a comedian who wants to be a singer. He shouldn't be up here. Tell me the truth, John. No, you're good. You just sing, sing, sing. <laughs> Not in sing, sing, but sing, sing, sing. <laughs> I should be a prisoner. Seriously. Prison no. Sing, sing. No. You just have to sing more. Well, what did that mean? Oh, we're going well, to decipher that clue. You just have to sing more, like rehearse more, and no, you just what? gotta sing it out, sing it out more. Those that's all. jams is when I do it. That's when that's the only chance I, d- I yeah. have to do it. I don't. I hardly ever sing. I like maybe even never. Why? You have good speaking voice. You have I, good singing voice. I have a good. I have a shyness when it comes to music, and I never told you this. Um, I actually, um, I'll tell you a real quick story. I know we have to wrap. It shouldn't be about me, but I think you'd be interested in this story because you're my, you're kind of like my coach. You're my muse to get up there. I got up there the other day. I I went with you. I was up on that stage. It was your jam, and I went. I'm getting up there. I'm going to. I didn't even know it was my jam, but until you got there. Okay. <laughs> so this is Joe yeah. Joe's jam. Come on, everybody. That's right. Welcome, my favorite singer of all time. Um, I was in college, and they gave me the lead and a play. Whoa. And I never sang ever before that. And I auditioned. I went, oh, you have a five octave range. I didn't even know what an octave was. Yeah, that's crazy. And I had five octave range, and I was like, it keep. And they gave me the lead in wow. a play, and I'd never been in anything before that. But I was way away from Philadelphia. You get your ass kicked if you're in musical theater. Oh. Oh, totally. I went out for sports like an idiot. I should have been doing musical theater, but no, no way. I picked my head in there. Oh my God, I would love to do that. But so I went away to college. And his song was called Something's Coming. Do you know it? From West Side Story? Sing this, it. Is, this is the most difficult song to sing for a male in like all of theater because it's got octave range, it's got difficult lyrics, different rhythms, and all that. And I said, Sure, I got it, I got it. But I had nowhere to rehearse. I'm in a dorm. You can't do rehearse musical theater in a dorm, shared showers. They'll, they'll think, you know, the, <laughs> the homophobes, and they'll kill me. So, and I'm never good with like, you know, getting like I don't know when to come in. You know, on the downbeat oh, or whatever right. it is. I I don't know music, so I got drunk. I get on stage and wear these beige pants. And this guy Ed Ball, he gives me my cue line. And cue line was supposed to be, "I'm sure something's coming." And he gets off stage. He messes me up. He goes, "I'm sure something's bound to come up." I'm bound to come up. What's that? And I hear Bev over on the piano, dun, 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 dun. and I don't know when to come in. So it ends up with this shaky. <laughs> Could be, who knows, something, I am so scared. And then this warmth came over me. I full-on peed my pants. Full-on beige pants. The spot just grew and grew and grew. The audience is laughing and pointing to my pants. For real? And Oh, yeah, for real. And then something was coming. (laughs) Oh, my God. 
gosh. I don't know what it is, but yeah. it's going to be great. Mm-hmm. And then I would get the words. I would know because the words are all mixed up. Yeah. And then I would belt them out like I, I'll show you. I can say, could be, who knows? And I See? go, and I go, will it, will it be? Dun, yes, it will. Dun, 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 da, 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 you know what? We're going to end the song. We're going to end the show by singing that song together. I don't know it. Oh. I mean, I know it, but I don't know the words. We'll sing just a few verses. Okay. Just a few things. I'll follow you. Around the corner or whistling down the river, come on, deliver to me. Now, what would you? how would you tell me I should sing that differently? That was good. That oh, was, was perfect. I was in. I was all in. Where were you when I was wetting my pants? <laughs> I guess you had to do it. I don't know what it is, but... Don't be shy, meet a guy, pull up a chair, the air is humming. I listen to that voice, I knew I'd get her to sing. Deliver to me, to me, I don't mean... Will it be, yes it will, maybe just by holding still. I'm not wetting my pants right now. See Back how to... hard? See how difficult mm-hmm. it is? Maybe it might be mm-hmm. Leonard Bernstein. I, I think West Side he... Story, yeah, of course. Yeah, I think he did right. Right? They just had the, you know, the, the movie. I know. I haven't seen it yet. Well, Joan, this was just, you know, I just love hanging with you. And we'll do another jam sometime. All when right. the, there's no microphones that other people can hear. the millions of people around the world that are watching this right now. <laughs> <laughs> watching. By the way, watch it. Don't listen. So if you're listening on iTunes or whatever it is, switch over to YouTube just for this episode, okay? Just so you can see Joan Jones's face. Oh, my God. I feel so judged. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like when I was growing up, my mom judged. My mom was there the other day. I met my mom. She's very judgmental. The entire trip. Craig, I don't know what's wrong with you. You don't watch the news? How are you informed? Everything. <laughs> Well, you you know, could you could gain a few pounds. And now all of a sudden I could gain weight. Now I could I lose weight. Whatever it is, has a comment about everything. But she judges me so much that other females who judge me, I feel it. You of all people, I feel it for thirty some years. I, feel like I get judging. the Joan Jones judgment. My my navigational system. It sounds like my mom judging me. I make a wrong turn. I hear the eyes roll, rerouting, just like your eyes. Just like you did today. We're rerouting. Wrapping it up here. Thank you, Wrap Joan Jones. Up. Uh, hopefully this is painless for you. Thank you oh all for goodness. joining us. It's still standing up with Craig Shoemaker. Joan Jones, my special guest. Make sure you check her out. The most beautiful voice. Oh, it's going to connect with you much more than mine will. Around the corner, whistling down the river. Come on, deliver to me. Come on, you couldn't hold that note? I can't. <laughs> she couldn't hold the note. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> of course you could. Thank you all for being here. Make sure you pass the word. Go to iTunes and all that stuff and give us a nice review. Oh, give us a rating and review. I always forget to say that. Oh, you get some vitamins here for I being do? Here. What do I get? You're going to get- Am the, I going to oh. get testosterone? No, you're going to get <laughs> mental performance. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, I know you need give this. It. <laughs> give it. <laughs> Anyone with a cat waking them up at 3 o'clock in the morning, Come get on. your mental performance, biotech, before you gain. By the way, this is amazing I need the stuff. cup for coffee you, you, at 3.30. Oh, we have a cup for you. 3.30 a.m. says, I need my it. saying stuck between namaste and kiss my ass. Okay. Joan Jones, perfect. thanks for being here. And you all, thanks for being here. Pass the word, and we'll see you next time. Okay. I want to tell people out there, and Joan Jones, our special guest, we have a sponsor now, Viotech. Stop trying to grab it. She she wants to so much for her memory to change. Do you have a good memory? I it's did. fading, isn't it? I did. It's fading. Did past tense. Well, not anymore. If you take some of this Viotech before you game, this is actually great for mental performance. Hmm. These are all clinically tried. They have recipes. I know it's not called a recipe. <laughs> Concoctions. <laughs> they put it together. I don't have anything in front of me that says, all I can tell you is it works for me. You see how quick my mental acuity is? I do. There see. you go. There's the reason. I'm going to give you a bottle. It's okay. Joan Jones, thanks for being here. A special guest. 
And we'll see you next time. Make sure you pass the word. Still standing up with Craig Shoemaker. Ah. Let's do one big chuckle chatter to end this thing. Ready? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Say it out loud. What's bothering you? A waste of my entire life was being on your show, Craig. Oh. You can say it out loud. It's worse than my cats attacking me at night. (laughs) Thank you, Joan. Thank you, Craig.